This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. We've got a carrier package unit. This is a little guy. It's probably a five ton, I'm guessing. I'll look at the information right now. Complaining and it's not working. Pull out the filters and we are iced up. So I'm gonna get it defrosted real quick. We're gonna shut down the unit and then uh, we'll check it out and see what we can figure out what's going on with this thing. So we're gonna open this guy up and we're just gonna pull the compressor contactor, control voltage, and let the unit run with the indoor blower motor for a bit. And uh, I'm pretty sure I felt the indoor blower motor running right now, so we'll check it. And then we'll obviously check the belt too. Yeah, indoor blower motor's running. So we're gonna let it defrost itself with this panel open right here and then we'll gauge up and figure out what's going on. So we are all defrosted. Um, we're gonna go ahead and start this guy up. So I have got return air sensor down in here. It's just stuck where it's getting a little bit of mixed air because this economizer is broken, the damper, but someone has it jammed open. So I, I got it so it's getting the mixed air. The discharge air, I'm not gonna be able to get down in the duct work, so I gotta do at the side, the discharge spot right there. And then obviously discharge pressure, suction temperature, liquid temperature, all that good stuff. So we're going to start it up and see what happens. So this is what we're looking at right now. It's approximately 88 degrees outside. Working on an R22 system. It's approximately 10 to 12 here. It's probably a 2004 unit. This unit has fixed orifice metering devices. Um, you can see our subcooling's really high. Our superheat's really high. Suction line temp is high. Liquid line temp is low. Our suction pressure is low. Our head pressure is a little bit high. I'm thinking that we've got a, a plugged up metering device. It's very common on these things, judging from the way that it was iced up. So this is what Measure Quick's telling me. And I also am still a little unstable. I cleared out and jumped into the faults. It's very good possibility that we are overcharged. A lot of times when there's a restriction such as what we I think we have, people will overcharge to try to compensate. And as we're stabilizing out, we're still, yeah, subcooling's too high, superheat's too high. I'm gonna, let's go and look at the uh, metering devices on this guy. So if we look back there, you can see that my metering devices are frosting up. And that's because we have a plugged up fixed orifice metering devices. Very common on these carriers. So we're gonna have to give the customer a quote to change the metering device. You know, obviously they put a lot of money. It looks like they've recently put a compressor into this thing. Um, so uh, yeah, I'll have to see what they wanna do. As usual, big picture diagnosis. Uh, oftentimes these heat exchangers fail on these carrier units. Um, it's very common, especially when we have poor duct work like we always do. So um, I'm just visually inspecting the heat exchangers. I don't see any cracks, surprisingly. Don't see any holes. Again, that way I can go to the customer and say, hey, you know, you need a fixed orifice metering device, but the heat exchanger's cracked or whatever. But in this case, I don't see any problems. Um, I'm not gonna like rip the thing apart and do combustion tests and stuff, but just doing a visual and it looks okay. It just looks like it's gonna fail eventually. So we'll definitely let them know. This blower wheel could definitely use a cleaning. It's not horrible, but it's got quite a bit of dirt buildup on it. So we'll definitely make that part of our diagnosis too. All right, this one was a pretty dead giveaway the moment that we saw the, the ice pattern on the evaporator. Um, whenever I see an ice pattern like that, it's usually indicative of a low refrigerant charge and or a fixed orifice metering device. Oftentimes you can see some funky ice patterns such as because that metering device feeds into multiple circuits into that evaporator coil. So you might see like frost every other row of uh, like after each fixed orifice metering, you know, piston or whatever. So, um, but yeah, so we had the super high sub cooling, the super high superheat, and then the weird frost pattern. It was just kind of a dead giveaway. Um, you know, but still, like I said in the video, I like to go big picture diagnosis and just kind of look at the rest of the unit. In a perfect world, I'd love for them to change that unit. And something that I get this question a lot, it's not very practical to change package units here in Southern California. The customers end up having to spend likely 
four to five times the the repair cost to go ahead and replace that unit. So, you know, yeah, to, to you and I, it seems like, gosh, you know, they, it looked like they had just put a compressor in that unit. Um, so they probably spent, you know, quite a bit on that too. But to them, it's just at this point in time, what's it going to take to fix this unit versus spending a lot of money up front and, you know, getting a warranty and having a longer life on the, you know, the new unit that they would install. But, you know, chain restaurants, they typically don't see it that way. And they just have to look at their budgets and see how much they have available at this moment in time. So, you know, that's one of the things I really haven't addressed that too much in my comments when I ask when people ask me, like, why don't you, re you know, I quoted a replacement. So basically, when I give them the quote to fix this, I quoted a replacement too. And I said, here's your two options. And the replacement cost was almost four times higher than the repair cost. So, you know, that the customer just basically has to do what they will with that. And, you know, in this particular case, we're coming into the fall. It's uh, it's the end of September right now. And the customer actually declined the repair at this time um, just because they're, they're low on funds as far as their budgets go right now. So they're just going to hold off until they get a complaint from the restaurant. Now, they didn't want me to shut down the unit. So essentially, that's just going to lead to it freezing up again and water leaks. Let's hope that they don't damage that new compressor. But, you know, I mean, we just got to do what we got to do. And, you know, the customer, they just, you know, they have reasons why they make these decisions. And I'm there to just basically do what I'm told and give them my sound advice. You know, hey, it'd, it'd be best if we fix this unit now before it causes problems later. But, you know, inevitably, they're the ones that make that decision. OK, um, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video and all my other videos. It's such a trip to see the response that I get from you guys. Um, you know, we're going on a year and some change of uh, I think it's like a year and a half of making these videos or something like that. Um, it's super cool and it's super humbling. I'm thank you guys very much. OK, and I hope that what I deliver helps you guys in some way, whether, you know, if you don't like my content, Leave me some feedback. Let me know what you think I could do better. I'm always looking for feedback. I'm always looking to improve my troubleshooting skills. Um, there's not a whole lot I'm going to be able to do to improve my video shooting skills or video editing skills because that's not my forte. But, you know, I'm always looking for um, advice on how I can be a better technician. So please, please let me know. OK, um, reminder that I do live streams every Monday night, work permitting, uh, 5 p.m. Pacific time, where I usually answer all the questions from these videos and from emails and from Facebook comments. So uh, come tune in. It's on my YouTube channel. And uh, other than that, we will see you guys on the next one, okay?